Hello, this is Alex Koretz, and this is a brief overview of the remote notification add-in for Windows Home Server. Remote notification keeps you up to date on the status of your home server no matter where you are. It forwards the health notifications generated by your home server to an email address. It will show the active notifications in an RSS feed, as well as send daily reports with a summary of your home server's health and various other statistics every morning to your inbox. As you can see, I've already installed the remote notification add-in. It's visible here in the home server console. We'll come back to that because the first thing you should do after you install is configure the settings. We'll jump straight to the send tab where you'll need to configure the SMTP or mail server settings for your email provider or your ISP so that remote notification can send you the emails. We make this easier for you by providing presets of a lot of the common mail providers and ISPs. I'm a Gmail user, so I'll select that. It pre-populates the host name, port, and other settings that I need. So I just need to give it my username and my password. And then, uh, as you can see, these labels are highlighted in red because they need values. I like to put in the name of my server that will be sending the messages. And then I put in my email address that will be sending uh, the emails. As you can see, I've been informed that all the required fields have values, and I can go next to the Receive tab. Here we will add a recipient, someone to receive the notifications. There are three recipient types available in Remote Notification, Email, SMS, and Report. Email and SMS are very similar, with the only difference being that the SMS Report uh, recipient type will shorten the notification to fit into the 160 character specification for a text message to be received on your cell phone. We have pre-populated uh, some of the settings for the popular uh, email providers and mobile providers to help you make configuration a little bit easier. I'm a Sprint user, so I select uh, the Sprint host name there and I put in my phone number and then I can choose whether I want to only receive errors let me change this to SMS type I can choose if I also want warnings and whether I want to get the suppressed uh, or ignored notifications another feature available are exclude filters exclude filters allow you to define text that if it is contained within the notification you will not receive the message in this case, I don't want to get a notification if it's complaining about the antivirus status of any of my PCs. I'm not worried about getting those on my cell phone. So I will add those as a filter. And you can add as many filters as you like. And then the, another feature we have is the notification schedule. This is a do not disturb period where notifications uh, will not be sent. So, uh, for example, if you sleep with your phone next to your bed for emergency calls, but you don't want to be woken up by your home server, uh, you can just say, uh, don't send me any messages between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. or whatever your hours of sleep are, and you will not receive messages during that time. Now you see I saved that recipient. I can now send a test message to verify that my settings are correct. I can also add a report recipient. Now the daily reports, I'll show you an example, contain a lot of information about your home server. Now these arrive in the morning after the backups finish, after, uh, which you've configured in the home server console. By default that's 6 a.m., so shortly after that you can get this email. And it shows you a number of statistics about your home server, including all the active notifications and the client backup status, so you can make sure that all your clients backed up successfully the previous night. These reports are configurable uh, to show what information is contained in them. There is also a simple text format as well uh, if you want a very simple email format, but the HTML format is a lot nicer. So you configure the email address to receive the report, and now you can also test that recipient as well. Make sure to apply your settings before you send the test messages to make sure everything's configured correctly. Here you can enable the RSS feed. Um, this will enable the RSS feed. You can configure reader to use. Here we're looking at it in Internet Explorer. You can see when the notification was created and the full text of the notification as well as some categories for filtering uh, just the errors, for example. 
All right. You can see here that I'm using a uh, trial license. Remote notification does come with a 30-day trial license, so you can evaluate all the features and make sure that it's the right fit for you. After 30 days, it will fall back to light mode, which offers only very basic feature set. Um, light mode is free. You can use it forever, but you will not get the RSS feed. You don't get the daily reports, and you can only have a single recipient to get email or SMS messages from your home server. So this is the console tab where we show you all the active notifications that are going on uh, with your server and you can select it and see more details down below. We also record the notification history for all messages uh, for all notifications that are uh, created and then cleared on your home server. And finally we store the message history so any emails that are sent by remote notification will get recorded and you can view what was the content of the message and whether it was successful and if there was an error you'll see the error message uh, to hopefully figure out how to fix it. That's it for remote notification. Please visit remotenotification.com to download the 30-day trial and try it out on your Windows home server.